Hi. Good morning. Okay. Let me try to share my screen. Just check. Mom, we can't hear you. It's, the mic is now on mute. I'll just do that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 yeah? Yes, okay. So I am speaking on my cell phone mic. I am not speaking on my uh, laptop because last time when I had done a session, people said there was a lot of echo. So I don't want to uh, repeat the same mistake. Uh, in Google Classroom, there are two things that I have done. I've just started and we will be, I will be uploading documents as we go by. But uh, this is a course that you are all involved in and you can see the fact that there is some material that would get, oh, I hadn't published it, so, okay. So, uh, you should be able to look through and uh, see these courses. What you also should, uh, what I will also upload is the PPT that we will work on together today to see what the course is about. And uh, another thing that we will be looking at is, um, the what does it mean to say that you are reflecting a text, you're reflecting on a text or you're reading a text, right? So what do you think from all of you in terms of the first part, what do you think, uh, why do you think this paper is there in the first place? You can chat, you can type in the chat if you think that you would, uh, you know, be making too much of noise joining in. You can type into the chat. Why do you think the paper is there for you all? I'm just checking on my uh, aspects to see what else. Some people are typing, so yeah, we we'll look and wait yes. for that. Three, okay. 
just one or two points that you think. Why do you think the paper is there for you all? Am I uh, clear, Yukti? Is uh, my audio clear now? Okay, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Long chats, huh? Uh, yes, because you need to be comprehending and be able to uh, research as professionals. Definitely. That, that is definitely one of the points. Uh, while others are typing, I will also go on to the next slide just for us to sort of push it forward a bit. Uh, please do continue typing in. So one element of this is, uh, I can't, I don't know if you can see this here. One element of this is that you also need to reflect on your current literacy skills. And that's one of the things that we will be uh, doing, right? So this is the first one. You reflect upon your current level of literacy skills. You need to be updated with the current scenario. Yes, but the current scenario is not uh, all that. Uh, <laughs> that's a very clever one, Dipali. Whoever has taken a screenshot and put it up there. Uh, as a teacher, it's important to have skills in language, yes. <laughs> but <clears throat> one of the first things that they talk about is literacy. What is it that you understand of literacy? I'm changing the question. We're going to the next question now. What is it that we understand of literacy? Yeah. So... Uh, can you say what literacy could mean? Uh, is this is a compartment? Sorry. Okay, no one is typing. I don't know. Yeah, being able to read and write and understand it. Yes, to some extent. The government of India, to a large extent, calls anyone literate if they know how to read and write, even their name, right? So even if you just know to write your name and you know to read Jod Akshar and you can sort of literally link one to the other, and be able to talk about it, that is what literacy would mean, right? But that's not the only definition of literacy. There is something else that is called critical literacy. There is something that's beyond the ability to read and write. The three R's, as we call them, reading, writing, and arithmetic. There is something beyond that. And the beyondness is basically on the fact of how are you able to comprehend? How are you able to express yourself? Yes, but also how are you able to comprehend other aspects and other actors in terms of the written and spoken discourse? And how are you able to then take the information, think about it, and then be able to respond to it in a constructive uh, useful manner as a citizen of the country, as a professional in your domain, what is it that you're able to do? So literacy is not just about your ability to read. A child may be able to read complicated sentences, but it is not that the child may understand all of those sentences. The child may be able to get the literal meaning but not the nuanced meaning. And so some of these levels of what literacy itself means will be something that the course will deal with, right? Uh, so how do you understand what are the words? 
Yeah, so as one of the things that I just was trying to do is, even if you take up the word of literacy, there are multiple meanings and layers associated with it. Can we, can we understand what the surface level means? And can we also deep dive into what the uh, lower level, I mean, not the lower levels, but the deeper levels mean, right? So that's something that we will be doing. Another is that acquire the basic skills to be active readers in control of your own comprehension. Please note, this is exactly what we were talking about. You need to be active readers. Uh, active readers assumes that we will be doing some action with reading. And that action with reading is what uh, acquiring basic active uh, skills would be. So you need to be in control of your own comprehension, but you also need to engage with the text and be thinking about it. So this is what your fake news and other ideas of what media literacy can do, et cetera, would be. Uh, please, if someone, one of you does not understand, if I'm going too fast, if you think that I should speak in, uh, you know, Hindi partially, let me know and I'm happy to do it, but please do type in, okay? Um, this third skill, and this is what the course objectives are, acquire basic skills to be independent writers. And this is basically what Rukaya was saying, to be expressing yourselves, but also to express yourselves in a way that you understand your audience your organization in terms of the content will be according to how the audience needs it, what the purpose of the content would be in terms of intent, and be able to write and express yourself. I am in class, Amma. Amma, I am in class. Amma. So the last one is Prepare self to facilitate. Sorry. Prepare uh, the self to facilitate good reading and writing in students across the ages. Uh, and so this is the last part. So you have pushed this in, right? As a teacher, you need to be updated. We need to be comprehending, researching. You need to be able to read and write. But also, you need to be able to facilitate these same skills in the. Uh, and those are important aspects, right? So the first one in terms of your unit one, and I'm going to go out yeah. objectives. Yeah. See yeah. how yeah. Can be OK. Yeah. So the first part is, uh, these are some of the questions before we begin with unit one that you should be thinking about. Do I like reading? What kind of reading do I like? How much time do I really spend reading? Uh, and what does reading really involve? What is reading and is it different from literacy? These are some of the questions that are pertaining to the first and second uh, objectives of the course, but also the uh, program itself. Uh, I'm going to switch the screen to be looking at the entire uh, course aspects. And so this is the first module. Can you see the uh, Word document now? I am sorry, I am on the chat screen. So can yes, someone tell me? Ah, yeah, okay. So the first part of it is, uh, thank you, Akansha. Uh, the first part of it is the fact that we will be looking at state the current level of literacy skills of the individual, uh, explain the role of literacy in things. And these are things that you should be able to do. I don't want to spend too much time in this. We'll keep coming back to this unit all the time and explaining the link between literacy, thinking, self-esteem, et cetera, thinking the need for second language, why do we need literacy in a second language? And what does it mean to have a literacy in second language? Discuss the need and strategies that you would require. So we'll spend more time on this aspect as such, uh, 1.4, than we will on the other three, because I also assume that you will be able to reflect on it and be able to talk about it somehow 
in the sessions that we will have on Google Classroom, et cetera. So there are two ways that I'll organize the course. One is that there will be some interactors for you to respond to in Google Classroom. I will push in certain questions as to what you think about uh, the need for literacy and the current status of university graduates in terms of status and concerns. Uh, also to talk about the role of literacy in education, career and social life and uh, literacy thinking and self-esteem. So can we just start with this first one for now to look at and say, what is it that the status of concerns, what is the status of uh, literacy and reading levels in among the current university graduates? What do you think it is? And this is at a larger level, right? This is not just at the BA ed or at the uh, things. It's all across a, all the engineering colleges, the medical colleges. I'm going to just stop sharing for a minute and come back one second. Yeah. What do you think it is? Is it good? Is it bad? You can also use emoticons. You don't have to type. Come on, let's try and make the class more interactive and not just a one-sided conversation. It's average to bad. My question was, uh, as posed earlier, what is the status and what are the kinds of concerns of reading levels, of literacy levels on first year uh, on university students, right? So the question was that. Average, uh, yes, average to bad, okay. Wonder why. Reading just limited to the curriculum, not that good, all right. So reading just limited to the curriculum is an interesting point that we will get back to, Ayana. Uh, that's a very good point. But I also am interested and curious to know that uh, what does it mean to say reading just limited to the curriculum? Why is that a bad thing? It's something that we will debate, right? We will debate that. Uh, yeah, few people who is not interested. Yes, that's fine. Correct. Those are important aspects to have in mind. Mm, OK. Yeah. Can I talk, ma'am? Sure, sure, so please I think, do. I think uh, at university level, uh, students are still not able to uh, what, apply or implement whatever they are reading or whatever their literacy level is to mm -hmm. social, uh, to cultural and political level. Mm -hmm. And this is the scenario at uh, metro cities or major cities, but in rural areas it is still uh, i would say average or so so kind of uh, literacy level right so uh, i have certain uh, objections in that sense and not objections but also i'm going to give contrary so i this is something i do in every class of mine i play a devil's advocate so if you take position a I will take up position A negative. If you take up position B, I will do position B negative. If you take position C negative, I will take up position C positive. That's the way that I ask to, for you to reflect on and it is one of the exercises that we will do. Uh, 
I agree, Poonam, that there are two types of reading, reading curriculum as, and, uh, you know, and then there is their own interest. Uh, and reading of books has decreased. And so these are questions that uh, we need to think about in terms of cause and effect. Uh, we need to think about as what does it mean to have reading? So when you say that in the uh, in the urban scenarios, maybe some students are good in the urban colleges, but not as good in the rural colleges. I have found that that's not always true. It is, and this is again debatable, okay, because each one of us has one, we can have anecdotal references, which we all do, which is based on our experience and our listening to other people's experiences. But then there is another part of research which asks you to focus on data. And data will also tell you something that the reading levels of students in, um, in depending on their, what do you call them? But depending on their ability to understand and to read uh, in their native language, in the vernacular, in the regional languages, is going to be different from the way that they might consume English texts. And so these are elements that we will have to think about and be focused upon as to say, what do we understand by reading? Uh, so let's also think about these, right? Now, what does this mean? Uh, it means... Uh, it means that you would have to think through and say, if I'm reading this text, how will I take this text and utilize it in my classroom? Or how will I read this text and what will I understand of this text? So I have already given you a hint. I told you that cause and effect. I have been showing that on the screen for some time now. But if you had this aspect of the text, uh, how would you organize it? Take two minutes and read through. You can also talk. I'm, yeah, to read any topic. Mm, I don't know, Poonam. I don't know whether I have the ability to read any topic. Uh, we have the ability to read any topic uh, effectively without any scaffolding. So that's the other part of it that we will have to do. Yes, absolutely. OK, now if I'm looking at this text and I am trying to organize it in terms of and I hope you've read some part of it. Yesterday, after playing with my hamster on the floor, I put him back into his cage, but I didn't close the lid tightly and he escaped. I didn't know he was loose until I saw something run by my feet. I jumped up quickly and hit the lamp on the table next to me. The lamp fell and crashed to the ground, making a loud noise. Soon my dad was in the room, upset that he was woken, awoken from his nap. Now, I'm not going to go on with this, but I'm just saying if we take up just these lines and move on to the next um, slide, there is a kind of cause effect pattern. And if you, I, and I'm doing this exercise at a lower level primarily because of that. If you are looking at this and trying to get students to try and say, I did not close the lid tightly and he escaped, they do not seem to recognize this element of cause as the effect of his escape, right? So I'm just giving the answers out here and saying that this kind of comprehension from one line of the text, uh, I didn't close the lid tightly, to understanding it as my hamster escaped, is difficult for students to be able to do until and unless they are kind of 
uh, one of the things that I would say is until and unless they are uh, constantly enabled to do this test, right? They are enabled to be able to reach to this exercise. So these are kinds of scaffolds that you need to be able to do uh, the kind of reading. This is a very preliminary level, a school level kind of reading that happens. How many of us are able to take this kind of data and uh, be able to organize heavier texts, larger texts that you will be reading and figuring out cause effect or any other kind of relationship? It could be comparison, it can be contrast, it can be um, what is fact and opinion, how is it that you would have fact and what is it that opinion deals with? All of these are things that you require reading to be able to deduce. A lot of the points that we are right now making is the fact that in media, currently a lot of the fake news as we talk about is just an inability on the part of a lot of people to not be able to, you know, distinguish fact from opinion, from myth, right? So these are elements that we will have to be uh, conscious about. And this is one part of the reading exercise that we will be doing. Uh, going back to the question that I asked, what is the current level of reading skills of um, students in university? There are different studies. Most studies at least point to the fact that at least 50% are, have very poor reading skills and are not able to comprehend information. Uh, one part of it is because of grammar and vocabulary levels, but the other part of it is a basic inability to think beyond the words on the text. And that is also a point, a case in point, right? That what does it mean to be literate as Active readers does not mean I blindly memorize something almost like a drawing, compre comprehend it at surface level and be able to vomit it out in my exams. How is it that I distinguish? What is it that I can uh, comment on? What is it and how is it that I can focus these elements are parts of it. Now, why am I talking about all of this? I'm talking about all of this because the fact that you have reached university, but you still have poor average skills will obviously affect the way that you think of yourself. The, it, it starts affecting your thinking levels. So you may be a very good oral uh, thinker. You may be someone who is able to comprehend information when it is spoken, but because so much of our discourse is in the written uh, arena, we start losing faith in ourselves to think through. And so how can we bring some of the audible skills? Like some of the, one of you had said, I can't remember who, uh, sorry, but uh, one of you had said that there's a lot of social media and we, um, you know, uh, Poonam had said that there's a lot of social media available and there is a reading of books that has decreased as a result of it. And my question is, but if I read, a, if I listen to a lot of books, does it mean that I am not a very literate person uh, just because I don't read? And so what does reading involve? Not is it only decoding the written text or is it something beyond? And can these skills be transferable? are things that we will try and address in this question, right? So the need and strategies will go on for quite some time. I'm just trying to give you an overview comprehension. Um, there is another module which reflects on it where we will be looking at different kinds of texts, personal, creative, and critical. I think the ones who started talking about how you can express yourself uh, are definitely people uh, who might be liking the creative uh, element, but also what do you mean by critical, how anecdotal differs from researched material, what are the kinds of metacognitive processes that we will involve and engage in trying to make meaning of the text. So reading is a meaning-making activity. It is not just a activity that involves decoding, right? Uh, 
another is, of course, developing reading skills. Uh, try to understand the mind and thoughts of the writer and message given by the writer. Can you not hear me, uh, Shion? Can others hear? No, no. Right now, I can hear. Yeah, OK, OK. So, um, so what does it mean to be developing these kinds of reading skills? And what does good reading skills mean? So can I take a quick uh, survey here, pause here, and say, uh, what do you understand by good reading skills? Like, let's take up one thing. What do you understand by good reading skills? What, are, what is the one thing that you think, oh, he's a good reader because, or she's a good reader because, you know? Uh, Choice of topics. Can... Okay. Yeah, sorry, you were saying something. Please go ahead. Uh, if a person can uh, pause correctly or... Uh have appropriate voice modulation as per uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so speaking out the text is something that you uh, would consider right i'm just pushing it into the chat so that okay fluency in reading what does it mean hetal when you say fluency in reading i mean how would you consider someone fluent and I'll, I'll ask you why a bit later, I'll, uh, things. understanding what you read, ability to comprehend, yes. Fluency is accuracy plus speed of the reading. Okay. Uh, fluency does not technically deal with accuracy, and we will get into more details of that. Fluency typically in... Uh, you know, language teaching components will be only about the ability to do it fast. And over a period of time, it is hoped that it will move towards more of accuracy because of the ability to, you know, bridge through the material. So that's one element of what fluency deals with. But yes, if that is what you mean, the ability to comprehend and be able to read fast, uh, uh, if there is no proper fluency, comprehension may get affected. Yes, it may get affected. Uh, if you are very slow, you will get frustrated and give up. But uh, the reason why I'm talking of fluency is that fluency is generally associated with speed. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Poonam, that is something that I'm very interested in, fascinating, that you can sit with books for more than 20 to 25 minutes. That's a very low bar to set for what reading skills are expected, but uh, that's a nice, very specific bar also. So great, nice. Yeah, those are kinds of things that we can talk about. So um, a typical reading skill and a reading speed is uh, 20 to 25 minutes uh, is, is, I'm not getting into that element, but a typical reading speed that news channels say that you must have, and they have done this obviously based on a lot of research, is that you must be able to read at least 200 words a minute. Uh, if you want to Swayam MOOC guidelines, uh, uh, they will tell you that you must be able to read online. And there is a difference between reading in print and reading online, reading as subtitles and reading entire text. And so Swayam guidelines tell you that an average reading is around 150 words a minute. 150 words is basically about this kind of page. It's uh, very minimal in terms of a text. That's what 150 words would mean. And they think that that is a good enough reading speed for being online and engaging with a text actively. Uh, the reason I'm asking you these as good reading skills is that not all reading requires one to be able to comprehend the text. I may also need to just identify material without reading. So I can go to a dictionary and be able to pick out a word and be able to do that without understanding everything else in the dictionary. 
I may be able to go to a telephone directory and pick out a word or pick out a number without understanding everything else about what even that word means. You know, for instance, uh, a chiropractor needs to be found. I know where to go and search for it, but I don't really need to understand who or what a chiropractor is. That is also one part of reading skills, the skimming and scanning level of a reading skill. So I need to be able to understand what do I need to do with this? You know, when teachers ask this question, and I don't think, uh, that find the words in the text that you do not understand, right? That's a part of reading skills also. And that is a kind of skim and scan. And they sometimes push this question at the beginning of the entire lesson, where they will ask, okay, all of you sit down, go through the text and identify all the words that you don't understand. And I always used to be startled as a student to be looking at that and saying, I'm not supposed to read, I'm just supposed to find the words that I don't know. And uh, you know that a lot of students do this routinely. So uh, these are kinds of elements of what skills might be. I may just be asked to identify, not really understand, and in fact, identify what I did not understand in it. So these are kinds of the metacognitive reading skills that we will have to be looking at in terms of processes. Um, <clears throat> and that is something that we will be focusing upon. I am pushing ideas out to you so that you can think about these and get back to me uh, and uh, you know, be looking through in those elements. Uh, the third one, which is the skill development in responding to text, defines the various strategies for comprehension, the various strategies for retelling, uh, summarizing, predicting. And one of the things that someone spoke in and uh, some of the things that someone spoke in to were the fact that reading means that you should be able to modulate your voice. And this is an important aspect of the retelling of the comprehension. Retelling, the word used is retelling, but it need not be retelling. It could also be rewriting. It could be organizing it in small notes. But what are the kinds of strategies that we would have to retell the story? Uh, it need not be about modulation or voice modulation at all. It depends, again, on the purpose. I may not want to dramatize something that I want uh, students to be able to uh, comprehend without any kind of intonation. So I may be trying to get the students to try and think through uh, what is important and uh, to be able to decode, even when it's a very flat, monotonous uh, reading, right? Uh, and discuss the strategy. So again, the unit two and unit three are very, very connected and we will be dealing with this quite a bit. Please do go through it and ask what is it that you do not understand. Uh, your points of recreational material of reading for a hobby. Uh, and it's very interesting that they have thought that that is narrations, uh, whereas we know that it could be other than narration. There could be people who like reading because I don't know, they are mad or something, but they like reading manuals, you know. I know of students from engineering who love reading technical manuals, and that's their recreational activity, actually, how-to guides. Uh, and then there are, of course, the school textbooks that all of you have pointed out to. Uh, so how do you respond to a text? Uh, how do you respond to narration, anecdotes, uh, chronological sequences versus how do you respond to procedural aspects? Uh, how do you respond to other elements? These are kinds of things. We will be looking at strategies, yes. Uh, I'm going to be also trying to break up the kinds and make you think through in terms of figurative language and stylistic devices used. So we will end with a small exercise, the class. So even if I forget, remind me even if it takes five minutes more, it's interesting. And I think it's a good start to what we will be doing further. 
uh, responding to a text using positive indicators for reports, policy documents, and news expositions and editorials, yes, and argumentation. So all of these are different kinds of text that we will be looking at. Uh, web search, as pointed out, some of you were talking about what is reading skills. Uh, as I said, this is a reason why when we talk about good reading skills, uh, that the good reading skills need not be always focused upon. It could be that the web search is just an ability to decode and be able to understand what is the text about. And, you know, we go into, in, we go into malls and we pick up a book and we like rapidly scan through it and say, no, I don't want this book. No, 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 this is not for me. So that's a kind of rapid reading ability that you may have to practice. And how do you use technology and tools to do that? is also a question. I have learned a lot from my students. I hope to learn from you also, uh, especially the use of technology where I have students who just use the search function on files and, and just read around those words. I have learned how to uh, avoid, to frame better questions because of them. So I, it's, it's always nice to learn and grow from there, right? Uh, and then we move on to writing. OK, so uh, in the course of the curriculum, while it is that it is writing and uh, reading are separately and quite chronologically situated, I'm not going to do that. In the next class that we will have, we will look at grammar a bit, but this will be connected to some of the reading that I will start with the one exercise that I'll start today, right? So what are the surface mechanics of handwriting, neatness, alignment, spacing? This is more of formatting. I'm not going to spend time here, but writing as a process in this part, yes, we will spend time. If so, are some of you, uh, if you, some of you are struggling with some aspects of English language, please do let me know. I'm happy to guide you to other books and take a few, uh, you know, uh, spend a bit of time looking at the grammar elements. Uh, so this is one element that we will do in class. Uh, one of your assignments will be to edit and peer edit uh, sample text that you will uh, each produce. Uh, this will be one of the activities. And uh, these are the kinds of uh, parameters that they have identified, but we can also identify other parameters of what is, makes a good text. Some of the questions that you're talking about, fluency, etc., will also come in writing. But then what does it mean? to be uh, making comprehension and cohesive text, right? Uh, these are some of the samples of writing that we will do. Uh, this is one of the kinds of, uh, actually, the questionnaire that you might want to make, and this will be one of the assignments. Uh, also, converting written information into graphical representation. Uh, this is quite important as such. So this you have as a coursework. These are the kinds of coursework books that you would have. And we will be focusing on it. So all of this is not really off it. The one thing that I won't do that your Yukti ma'am will do is uh, look at the Braille literacy skills. So that's something she'll take up separately. I am not competent at all to uh, touch this topic. All right. So if you have any doubts on what your course deals with, you can ask now. Uh, otherwise, I'll just move on to that uh, exercise. I wanted you to understand the exercise primarily because you need to be looking at uh, you need to be looking at why you need to study and how you would need to study and not just what, right? Doubts? No doubts? OK, then I'm going to go ahead and think that uh, you understand the reading and the course material. Uh, can we can we just look at this aspect? This is taken from Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Uh, the last rains lifted the corn quickly and scattered wheat colonies and grass along the sides of the road. In the last part of May, the sky grew pale and the clouds that hung in, in high parts for so long in the spring were dissipated. The sun flared down on the growing corn day, 
on the growing corn day after day until a line of brown spread along the edge of green, each green violet. The clouds appeared and went away, and in a while they did not try any more. The weeds grew darker, green, to protect themselves, and they did not spread any more. So this is from a novel. Can you identify for me why there are certain words that are spread, that are repeated? And what does that repetition really try and tell us? So the question is, and I'm typing it out also, uh, what are the words or phrases repeated? And what impression do they create? In other words, why do you think these words have been repeated? Right? So which are the words repeated and why do you think they have been repeated? Any ideas? Anyone who wants to try? It's okay to be wrong and nothing perfect. I mean, just start with any point. It's a small um, character. Yeah. The words that I feel are repeated are corn, yeah. uh, clouds, and weeds. Corn, clouds, and weeds. Why do you think these have been repeated? Uh, what I can understand from this uh, passage is that... Um, um uh the uh, the corns growing on on the field i think and uh, the clouds uh i, I mean uh, there was rain and then the clouds have moved away and the mm -hmm. weeds have sort of taken over the space of the corn and turned green i don't know if i made any sense hello yeah yeah i am i am listening to you uh, I don't yes. know if it made any sense. What what idea I get from this passage is that um, the weeds are sort of replacing the corn. Yes, that is the idea. Uh, definitely the idea. And that is one of the ways that if you look at the corn seems to sort of fade out in the first yes. part of the passage. And the weeds seem to take over in the second part of the passage. So there is a structural uh, messaging that is repeating the idea messaging. Okay, so that's a good point to identify. There are also words, if anyone else has other words, please go ahead and say this was a very good, uh, uh, you know, point that can come through. And uh, uh, so this is something that you can definitely come up to and, uh, you know, write. So uh, this is all right. And uh, when you talk about it, there are words like any more repeated. There is a structure that gets repeated. The clouds appeared and went away. And in a while, they did not try any more. The weeds grew darker green to protect themselves and they did not spread anymore. So there is this entire aspect of, again, something of not happening. There is a stillness that comes in. And uh, these are the kinds of aspects that you can look at and say, how is it that get the messaging gets 
established. What is the kind of stylistic devices that the person has used? What is the kind of structure the person has used? Why do you think the person has used the word corn repeatedly when the person could also have used the word crop? The person could have used words like, you know, uh, the, the, mm, uh, the pods. And they don't say all of that. They just say corn, corn, corn all the time. And that is... These are elements of style that you can look at and try and think about why do you think the person is doing this? Where is this happening? So what you did just now, uh, sorry, was that Ruthuja? Uh, yeah. yeah. So what you did just now, in a way, yeah, was uh, to actually be able to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, to be actually able to think through why and how this activity comes and uh, presents itself. So this was a very good uh, attempt to do that. And as I said, these are the kinds of things that you will have to be focusing upon uh, to, to try and think what uh, passages come up with, right? Now, I'm going to get into another one and... Uh, This is a question that I have for you. Are all stories chronological? Chronological means what? What does chronological mean? In order or sequence? Yes, absolutely, Unnati. That is exactly what chronological means. Are all stories chronological? Not really. Absolutely. If I started in a detective novel with, you know, there was this man and he was, he had these enemies and, uh, you know, and, and then talk about his death. Every detective fiction begins with the crime and then traces it backwards. So mm, we'll have to think about what chronology is. Mystery novels, absolutely. And flashback is used a lot. So nonfiction has a lot of test structures. Uh, these, are quite, these are problematic statements that I'm putting across that we should be discussing when you're thinking about it. I'm very glad that a lot of you already are reading. And, uh, you know, we can look at five types of information chronological that can come in. There is chrono in order of time, in stories are told, uh, fell in love, and there is a timeline. Mm, as we just pointed out, this is not necessary. You could be, there is a timeline, and that is admitted, but you could be moving it across. And if you read a lot of other novels, like say by Ernest Hemingway, etc., you may sometimes never know when an incident took place. And you may never know what happened first and what happened later. Uh, sequence, etc., can come in. So I'm going to just sort of skip through these slides and move to another part. Mm. Yeah. I'm not really trying to talk through that, but uh, let's take up. Right. Also, a poem. I am conscious that we are running to the close of our time. So some of these we will come back to, but also this poem. Uh, the poem is titled Sophie and it is by Stephen Herrick. Uh, but it is, so can you just read? I think you are able to, so 